what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning how to integrate sign in with apple into your app so here's the app we're going to be making it's in dark mode but we've got this uh, sign in button here so i can go ahead and tap it and boom we got our bottom uh, sign in with apple sheet we'll take a look at how to configure our simulator to test it but in here we can now go ahead and uh you can actually come into here and uh, you can in fact even edit your first name and last name and then we can say sure share my email it lets you pick you know whatever email alias you want to share and uh, you can go ahead and continue and it'll just ask for your apple id one more time to validate which i'm going to be lazy and not do and uh, yeah we'll take a look at how to do this it's super simple super important and a lot of you have been asking for it so get started by destroying the like button down below Get extra ready, get excited. If you're new to the channel, welcome, hit subscribe. Let's talk about some sign in with Apple. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. If you're interested in building some of the top apps from around the world, like YouTube, Instagram, Uber, and Facebook, head on over to iosacademy.io and toss in your email in the waitlist form here to be notified as content becomes available. Content includes interview prep, free courses, premium content, how to build TikTok, Messenger, Instagram, and anything else you could think of in between. That said, let's get into the video. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this sign in with Apple test, just like that. We're gonna stick with UIKit, Storyboard, and Swift for our language. Go ahead and continue. We'll toss this guy onto our desktop. And let me get started by expanding our window here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and hit this run button to get our app loaded into our simulator. So the first thing I'll call out is I've actually gone into the settings app in uh, the simulator and signed into my personal Apple ID. Uh, you need to go ahead and do that to be able to test sign in with Apple. But if you haven't yet, uh, you can uh, just follow along in the video, and when you try to sign in, it'll actually prompt you to sign in. So that spiel out of the way, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is enable the capability on our project uh, to use sign in with Apple. So we're going to select this tab up here, capability uh, and signing, and we're going to go ahead and hit the little plus up here in the top left for capability. And you can just search for sign in with Apple. Once you go ahead and add it, you'll see this little uh, spinner here of waiting to repair. What this is actually doing is it's uh, configuring the Apple developer portal with the proper entitlements. Uh, it doesn't take too long, but it's basically setting up the back end on Apple side to be able to use sign in with Apple. So cool. So we're going to get into our view controller and uh, start writing some code. So let me bump up the font size here and let's do it. So the first thing we want to do is, of course, show a sign in button. And all the sign-in related stuff is a part of a framework that Apple provides called authentication services, uh, which makes sense. That's what we're doing, authentication. We're gonna create a button here. So we're gonna say private let sign-in button is a uh, AS uh, Apple ID, rather it is a authorization Apple ID button, just like that. Nice long name Apple gave us there. In view to load, we're going to go ahead and add this as a sub view. And then we're also going to uh, override view did the layout sub views, call super. And I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a frame. We're going to say CG rect X and Y are 0, 0 width of 250 and a height of 50. Now let's go ahead and center uh, this button. So we're going to say um, the sign in button center is view.center. Go ahead and, and R to build and run, and you should now see a uh, Apple sign in button here, just like that. So cool, looking good. The next thing we wanna do is actually hook up a action uh, to this and we tap it, cause right now we tap it, nothing really happens, of course. So I'm gonna create a function right down here. We're gonna call it, uh, let's see, func did tap sign in like so. And let's go ahead and add this as a uh, target onto our sign in button. So I'm going to say uh, add target self. The action is a selector did tap sign in. And uh, the event is going to be touch up inside just like that. And then now in here, this is where we get to the good stuff. How do you actually do sign in with Apple? 
So the first thing we want to do is create a provider. So I'm going to say the provider is a, if we just type in AS provider, you'll see all the options. The one that we want is the authorization Apple ID provider, just like that. And then from the provider, we want to get a request. So we're going to say provider and we're going to create a request. Boom, just like that. The next thing we want to do is specify what data do we want to collect from the user when they sign in. So in other words, uh, what scopes are we requesting? So we're going to assign requested scopes here. And here we're going to pass in a collection or we're going to say full name and email address, just like that. And now we actually want to show that little bottom sheet that you know pops up the UI to actually sign in. So for that, we're going to create the controller, which I'm going to say AS controller, and you should see it pop up in here. It is an AS uh, authorization controller, just like that. And you create this with the request. So here you see it takes a parameter of a collection of requests. So we're just going to pass in the single request that we've got right there. And uh, next up, what we want to do at the bottom here, instead of presenting the controller directly, we're going to go ahead and uh, say perform requests. But in between here, we want to assign the controller is a delegate to get some uh, information back. And we also want to assign uh, the, let's see, it is called the presentation context provider, which is also self. Now you'll see two errors for these because we have not conformed to, the, to these protocols yet. So let's go ahead and conform right down here. So I'm going to make an extension on the view controller. And the first one is going to be a uh, AS authorization delegate. I'm just going to start typing it. It'll autocomplete. And the next one that we're going to want here is going to be, once again, extension of view controller. And I'm going to say AS providing. And just be careful here because there are a few different variants for uh, web and account. You want the authorization controller presentation providing. And let's see what both of these do. So let's do this bottom one first. So it has one required function. So we can hit that error and hit fix and it'll stub it out for us. So let's read this function. It's saying presentation anchor for controller, and it wants us to return an anchor. That actually does not look correct to me. Uh, so let's see, AS authorization controller presentation context providing. The easiest way to check the type of this is, let's see, provider. Provider is an AS authorization con controller uh, presentation context provider. So let me make sure that's right. Let's see, let's see, controller presentation. So it actually is right. So actually this function is correct. Um, what we actually wanna do here is return view.window. And let me just explain this a little bit. So because iPads support multi-window, what this function is actually asking us, and the reason I got confused is because the return type isn't really a window here, it's this other thing. What it's asking us uh, is which window should we, Apple, present the sign-in modal in? Um, so they could have named it much more simpler just to make our lives easier, but you know, it's Apple, so why would it be simple? Um, and then in this function, this one's pretty easy. We're just gonna get uh, two functions. So there's a, if we actually just click in here, you'll see there's a did complete with the error, and then there's a did complete uh, with uh, a uh, credential. So we're gonna say, we start typing it, it'll autocomplete hopefully. So here's the first one and here's the second one. So cool. So this first one here is authorization controller, uh, did complete with an error. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna print out failed. And in this other function, what we have is we say authorization did complete with authorization. So in here, we wanna go ahead and switch on, let's see, we wanna do switch on the authorization dot credential. And the first thing we're gonna do in here is create a case that says credentials as, and this is going to be a pair of credentials. And the one that you want, let's see, we want authorization credentials, authorization, let me make sure I spell that right, authorization credentials. And you'll see once again, there's a few different choices in here. And the one you wanna stick with is uh, the one that has an Apple ID credential, just like that. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do in here is just break. And we also need to specify default and break. Now there is a, uh, a third thing you can put in here, which is 
how you would you know, re-sign in in a silent way in case the user has signed in already. Uh, but I'm not gonna be showing that in this video. We'll be talking about that in another video, but let's go ahead and give this a run. And let's see what we see in the simulator. So actually, before I even go there, I'll mention on this credential, you can get the things that we requested for in the scopes. So first name would be something like credentials dot, let's see, it should be a name in here. Yep, full name, and we wanna get their given name. You know, we can also get their last name, which is their family name, just like that, called as last name. And we can also go ahead and say, let email is credentials, and you guessed it, email. And uh, go ahead and give it a run. We should be able to see our sign-in sheet right here in the simulator. So what I was saying at the very beginning of the video, if you have not signed into Apple ID, uh, in your simulator, instead of seeing this, you would have seen a little alert saying, hey, you got to sign into your Apple ID. So, so cool, we hit the button and uh, it's saying, you know, create an account for a single app test, which is our app name with uh, the email that I went ahead and signed in. It's got my name here. We've got options to share email. You can also go ahead and hit this and then it gives you the options of whatever other aliases you have set up with Apple. So I've got my iCloud and I guess me.com account. I wasn't even aware that I had this email, but I guess I do. So I can go ahead and do that. And then here I'll just ask you for your Apple ID password to confirm. And uh, when you go ahead and do that, it'll basically just log you in. So there I just canceled it. And you see down here, we're getting a fail printed out because you know the result was a failure for our case because you know we didn't actually go and sign in, but Let's go into our simulator and hit Command Shift A. You'll still see everything looks pretty darn cool. So we got our got our sheet here. Of course, if you had an app icon, it would show up right there. And uh, and yeah, that's basically how you integrate sign in with Apple uh, directly working with Apple. You don't need to use Firebase or anything. It's really not that much code. Um, just to go over it one more time, we went ahead and added the capability in our Project Navigator here by going to uh, Signing and Capabilities. Uh, the spinner here was showing up because it was basically registering our bundle ID with Apple to use sign in with Apple. Then we went to our view controller. We created a sign in button. We added it with a target. We laid it out on the UI. And then we created a provider request and a controller. And this controller is the actual, uh, you know, the bottom sheet card that pops up. And then we have a delegate to observe uh, failure or success. And we also have uh, this providing thing down here, which is another protocol, which is lets our sheet know, you know, which window for our app do you want to actually present the sign in sheet on. Um, and that's it. That's all I've got for you guys. Bit of a shorter video, but uh, this has been requested by quite a few of you. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you haven't done so already, make sure you destroy the like button as per usual. Comment down below, do you use sign in with Apple? I think they require it now. So I hope most of you are gonna answer yes to that question. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have not done so already. And uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video.